Well, hello there and welcome to week nine of the class. I'm sitting here on my couch on a beautiful fall late afternoon. Sunlight pouring through at a very sort of comforting angle. You'll have to excuse me if the light bounces off my glasses. That's just the way it is. But it's a beautiful time of the year. I just love it. Um, the trees behind me through the window, as you can see, have yet to turn color, but they are right on the cusp. They will be, um, they'll be changing soon, and uh, as will the season. So here we are at week nine, and you have come a long way in this course. And I wanted to introduce this week by sort of situating what I'm asking you to do this week in terms of both where we're, where we're coming from with projects as well as where what I'm asking you to do fits within the overall big picture of the course and the big picture of being a professional educator in a competent one and an educator who uses technology to help um, advance their job and to make what they do more, um, more effective overall. So that's what this week is all about and this week is all about scaffolds. And so I want to spend a moment just talking about scaffolds. So I uh, very recently, like this last weekend, I was at home and I was playing Clue, or at least a version of Clue, and this was the Simpsons Clue that I got at the thrift store. And I was playing it with uh, one of my grandsons. And if I'm surely you played Clue. If you haven't, um, I won't go into the, the rules, but I will say if you have played it, or even if you haven't, I'm sure you understand that um, in the game there's a little sheet of paper, um, regardless of what sort of flavor of clue you play, there's a sheet of paper that helps you keep track of the suspects that you become aware of that, that aren't in the envelope um, that r represents the actual whodunit character. There's a section for weapons and then for locations on the clue board. And uh, if you haven't played the, the Simpsons version, it's really fun because the weapons are things like the poison donut and the plutonium rod and a few other really fun things. But it's the same game as the regular classic clue. Um, a murder mystery, just absolutely sort of indicative of the, of games in America, I suppose. But, but anyway, this sheet of paper, I, I was thinking about today and about scaffolds, and I was thinking about this wonderful experience I had over the weekend with my um, grandson, and I was thinking, this is a really good example of a scaffold um, for an experience in which, in, in my case, I'm trying to help help somebody young learn about deductive reasoning and about keeping track of, of observations and organizing them and, and basically kind of how to play a game of elimination or a game of deduction based not only on what they observe directly with their own play, but also what other people in the game uh, do. And so to help explain how to play the game, and to help keep track of what's going on in the game, the uh, game makers, Milton and or Bradley, provide this uh, wonderful organizing tool. And I thought, what a great example of a scaffold. In this particular case, this reflects a scaffold that could be considered, and you'll have to excuse me, but I'm gonna to have to use a scaffold from the course, and that's a organizational table with the scaffolding types. but. This particular scaffold could, or this, I should say this chart, could reflect a conceptual scaffold. And again, I'm gonna read from the chart that I provided for the class. A conceptual scaffold provides guidance over what the learners should consider or reflect upon throughout the learning experience. And, and if I looked at playing Clue as a learning experience regarding deductive reasoning and making observations and keeping track of or organizing those observations, then this, this chart that's provided definitely serves as a conceptual scaffold, but, but it could also serve 
as a metacognitive scaffold, a what what in this case I think it's a regulating scaffold, and that's to help something that helps monitor your progress as you're moving through a learning experience, and it also helps provide feedback over that progress. And certainly, if you if you get good at using this organizing chart, um, that it 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 helps regulate your play and it definitely provides feet excuse me i just bumped the camera it provides feedback um, over it so two good examples of uh, of 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 a scaffold that is um included in this particular game and um i wanted to bring that up because the game makers didn't have to include that um, that that chart they could just give you the rules kind of like chess you know where there's no there's no organizing chart for moves and for possibilities of moves and that um, but in this particular case there is some support that they offer and that's what a scaffold is in general when a learner is immersed in a learning experience and they need some support but but not all learners need support as they're moving through the experience, um, good educators provide access to to some s support um, mechanisms, and that's what to, that's what this week's project is all about. It's about offering or providing support as learners are immersed in in an experience in which some may find success early, but others might need some more support. And it's really up to the teacher to ensure that those support mechanisms are available. Now, what I think is absolutely stellarly cool about the project for this week is that I'm going to introduce you to a, a collection of tools online on, you know, technology supported tools that are that are uh, that or that use artificial intelligence as the driving engine for the tools themselves. And so you're, you're introduced to this website that includes about 40 or so AI supported tools. And you're going to have to identify a learning experience that helps promote the learning of things that are worth learning, things you identified early on in the class that are worth learning for your identified students. And you're going to go investigate this collection of tools and try to identify some specific ways in which specific tools could be used to create scaffolds for your students and you'll describe how and and when you would use such scaffolds and what i absolutely love about this is that it's looking at the value or the future value of ai as as a, a a significant resource in the practice of teaching and so um, and so that's what today's project is and it, it it flows nicely from what I've asked you to do over the last few weeks regarding other things that you can do as a professional educator to ensure that what you want students to learn how to do and the experiences you're going to define so that they can learn how to do it are designed in an effective manner. So a few weeks back, you looked at how you might use Google Earth as a way to introduce a new learning experience. And as I, as I presented in the course notes and on the, on the project pages, there's a collection of strategies that, uh, that re reflect the best way or ways you could introduce something new to a learner. I mean, and for example, at the very least, it's to communicate clearly what you want learners to be able to do uh, or to learn how to do as a result of the experience that you're about to immerse them in. Other things you can do that are really valuable in terms of strategies for introducing a new learning experience include connecting what they're about to learn, what they already know how to do or what they already know. And how, and, and how does that help? Um, learn something new so that that's those are just a couple of really good strategies for introducing and then most recently you were asked to identify how you might create an information presentation part 
of a learning experience that follows the rules for effective information presentation. Now I have to say that that is such an important skill set to learn and apply as a teacher because every day new tools are being developed that allow you to create visual presentations and representations of things that you want students to learn how to do. And, but, but you have to be able to identify whether or not what the computer or, or what the machine generates and is, is actually good, good for your learners. Is it really going to work for you? Is it going to help them learn? Or is it just something that causes more confusion and more cognitive sort of overload or dissonance or, or, or whatever? I'm, I'm sure you realize by now that you that that um, things like Google Slides and Canva include AI tools that will generate graphics to go along with verbal content that you upload, you know, like an information file. So you have this machine that will generate something like a PowerPoint for you to use in your teaching. But is it is it actually good? Is it effective? Is it the most effective it can be? Well, the only way you're going to know that is if you understand a little bit more about cognitive learning theory and um, and the kinds of the kinds of concepts that were presented in in the last project about good message design. So you have that, and now I'm asking you to consider how you might use AI tools to help you scaffold or support learning experiences for individual learners. And so the important thing about scaffolds is that they may not be needed by all students in a group um, when you're expecting all of them to learn something specific. Um, some will need more help than others with specific things. And so that, that's why I wanted to use the, um, the clue example of a scaffold in this, for this project because not everybody needs this. It's very helpful, as you know, and actually, the reality is, if you ever play this with younger um, people, you realize you might have to teach them how to use this particular chart. And that, that means you become another scaffold. Not everybody needs that help, but some do. Um, and, so, and so that's what scaffolds are all about, and that's what this project is all about. So you have this, um, this new project, and it's, I think it's very relevant to the, to, to the concept of AI, but also relevant to the use of technology resources to support the characteristics of effective instruction or effective learning environments. And, um, and I, I think that you will enjoy and appreciate learning more about that collection of tools. And, um, and again, we're at the second part of the class now. Um, and so you should look at this project and think, well, I'm here. Here's what, here's what I'm expected to do. Here's the timeline. And in this case, you have two weeks, two solid weeks to to do this. And so I hope that you take it um, seriously and that you um, complete it within the time frame, and that you do regard the entire experience as something that will be very useful for you in the future. So again, another great collection of online tools to help support uh, your educational efforts. And again, I hope you enjoy the creative aspect of this. Um, so that's it. As always, please contact me if you need any specific help. I'm happy to scaffold you um, beyond what I provided on the website, um, which does include um, information specific um, information on the project page that you'll be referencing and referring to, um, as well as the course notes um, and other information that I include. So anyway, hope you enjoy it. And again, contact me if you need any support.